It's a really good idea to keep the edges of the lawn short, as short as possible. As you can probably see just how long that's gotten over the last week. And that provides a nice little neat runway for any slugs and snails to be able to manoeuvre themselves onto your plots. And of course start to munch away at your precious vegetables. When you've been away for a week or more like we have, the edges of the lawn will actually be quite long. So don't leave them, because it's just going to do exactly the same job as if you didn't cut them. We have boundaries with fences, so after mowing the lawn, which I've just done, we also need to trim the edges, because again, it's places where slugs and snails can hide. And I'm always being asked how our plants suffer so little from that type of damage. Hello and welcome back. Now myself and Mrs W have just enjoyed a lovely holiday. It really was a lovely week, wasn't it, Mrs W? Superb, yes. It's what the doctor ordered, I think. <laughs> oh, yes. And we went to the Peak District, which is a really lovely place here in the UK. Uh, and for those of you that don't live in the UK, so won't know the geography, the Peak District is just above the middle of the country, not far from Sheffield and not far from Derby. In fact, I think we were about 40 miles from Derby, like that. probably about 10 miles from Sheffield, weren't we? So, um, but it was really, really lovely. Now, while we were there, we visited a couple of National Trust places, and one in particular where we saw these plants and they were some plants that actually we wouldn't mind having in our garden. But those of you that follow our channel up there in plot five to the back, you'll know we have our rhubarb. And the one that you generally see us filming is the one we've had for two or three years now, which is a variety called Strawberry Surprise. That's ready to pick now and you'll see that a bit later on in this video. But also last year we sowed some rhubarb from seed. Victoria was the uh, variety, and that tends to mature after the strawberry surprise. We thought, well, how about we get rhubarb just a little earlier than the two that we've already got? So, we found this. Timpley Early, and it's a variety I've heard of before, but as its name suggests, it comes particularly early. So hopefully we can have quite a long season of rhubarb from these three plants over the next few years. Now the other thing is, is that when we first decided to start our channel, uh, the garden was configured somewhat differently. At the beginning, there certainly wasn't any plot five, was there? No. <laughs> um, and down towards the house, that wasn't quite the same. We had a sort of herb uh, wooden container, really, didn't we? That all the herbs used to be in. And when we reconfigured the garden, that sort of went by the wayside. So one of the plants that we actually lost was this, which is a lemon thyme. Now I like to use uh, lemon when we're cooking chicken, lemon in lots of things, really. But a nice natural way of doing that is to use this particular plant. If you rub your hands over it, oh, I can assure you, that is so lemony. So we can stop buying all those lemons now, eh, Mrs W? <laughs> Just the odd one for your gin and tonic. Now, not being left out, Mrs W also wanted something. And she also liked the look of this thyme which is called Ruby Glow. Now it's very red stems compared to the normal green stems that you see on normal thyme or indeed on the lemon thyme. Don't quite know what's going to happen to it, but even the leaves seem to be going a little bit on the red side too, so that could look quite stunning. And at the moment, it's not quite as pungent as normal thyme, neither does it have the lemon smell of the lemon thyme, so. That's going to be very interesting. If anybody else knows how that uh, 
is going to grow and how it's going to smell and taste, do drop us a comment in the comment box below. Now, in today's video, we should be taking a look just how our new dig veg garden has cooked while we've been away. Now, first of all, what we needed to do, as you probably saw, was to mow the lawns, get the edges cut back and trim the edges around the boundaries of our garden. But the next most important thing is to do any weeding that needed doing. And of course, just because we're new dig, we're not immune to weeds. We still have weeds. We just tend to have less than people that aren't new dig. So, I've been using my trusty hoe to take out some of the smaller weeds and where they are a little larger. And I noticed that there was one just here, Mrs. W, when we took the covers off the radish. Oh, yes. If you just pull those out by hand. And of course, in new dig soil, they come out really, really easy. You can see the covers are actually also off the onions and uh, really pleased with those. We took those covers off this morning. And you can see after we got back, we had quite a bit of a shower. That's why everything's looking a bit damper than it was, but nevertheless, very welcome. And you can see just how much growth everything has put on from the onions to the brassicas. Why? Well, it's May and during May, we get lots of weather like we're having now. It can be quite damp at times, quite warm. It's actually quite warm here. It's probably about 12, 13 degrees is expected to get up to about 16, 17 today. On the days where it's not cloudy and damp, we get some nice sunshine. Overnight temperatures for us here in Norfolk are already round about six, seven or eight on a given night. So it's not gonna be long before they reach that magical 10 degrees overnight. All of that results in all of this growth. And if you didn't see our last video, or you're new to the channel and haven't seen that one yet, do have a look at it. Have a look at the video one week ago and look at those plants there, those brassicas. And I'll show you just how much growth really has been put on. So as I say, you know, we do need to pull any of the weeds that are there. Let's just have those out of there, Mrs. W. These are looking good, aren't they? They are looking really good, aren't they? They really are. And these have been, some of these have been grown, or some of these have been sown in modules and then transplanted out. But the ones further down this end, were actually sewn into those cardboard toilet roll middle. Indeed, these two here were actually put into the ground while they were still in the toilet roll middles. And you can see, it's had absolutely no effect or detrimental effect on the plants. Those two look just the same as all the rest in the row. I love how the water sits on the leaves. The little droplets of water. That's amazing, isn't it? It is. It really is. And how nature you know, naturally funnels the water into the roots. And the yes, it can run off, can't it? Yeah. Now, the other thing that I do like to do at this time of the year is to begin the process of keeping the plants tidy. So, you can see here this plant has now started to go a bit orangey brown. That means that it's not functioning particularly well. Unlike these leaves, which are lovely and green, 
and there's plenty of energy in those to be able to bring this case a calibres onto a harvest. These they're no more good. So what I do is take those off. These were probably the very first leaves that came out of the plant. But what they are doing, they're sending out signals to the pests, like slugs in particular, and snails, and they're saying, come and tidy me up. Because if I lay about here, I'm going to cause mildew, disease, and all the things that you don't really want on these plants. And I can assure you it does absolutely no harm to the plant whatsoever. There's more than enough leaf here, you can see how healthy it's looking, to be able to, or for that plant to be able to photosynthesize and continue its growth until we get a harvest. Can you remember last year, Mrs W, when we were growing some calibres and I said to you, we look like we're going to get a couple of plants on it. Mm -hmm. Look at this one, look. Is that doing the same? It looks like it's sending another one out there, look. Another set stem? Yeah. Oh. Could be another bonus harvest for Could us. Be. Could be. Now also, the potatoes in these tubs, they're coming on leaps and bounds. Of course, the wet weather that we keep having every other day is helping these tremendously. They also have our homemade compost in there. So they're absolutely loving life. Growth is really, really good. Now, the potatoes over this side, if you remember a week ago, you saw me earthing up, hilling up, people call it various things, we actually call it composting up. And you can still see the ridges where I covered those up. And I did that because, you know, 200 miles away on holiday and I don't exactly know what's going to happen here. We can get a rough idea at any time what the weather might be for the next few days, the next week. But you can't be certain. So, well, the best thing to do, they're just broken through, they were about that tall, so I just earthed those up, composted them up. And you couldn't see them on the last video. Now they're what, put on 12 inches of growth? Quite a lot. So they haven't been touched by any frost. Indeed, I don't even know if we got a touch of frost last week at any time. It doesn't look like because the plants are nice and green and healthy. But just by doing that, it has protected them to ensure that nothing did happen. And then in these tubs, I can see the familiar sight of the lovely Charlotte potato. These are Mrs W's favourites. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say they look familiar, because if you, when they come through, they always have this really dark tinge to them. Unlike the Casablanca we saw earlier, which were really a nice light green. They do lose it to a degree once they do start to, but a little bit later on, you know, they always look a darker colour than the other potatoes that we've got. So they're all doing fine. Marvellous. And we have the broad beans. They're all nicely in flower and although they haven't quite grown through yet, I can feel that there is a Bean under there, that's starting to form, because I can see the green under oh, there. Yes, I can see yeah. that now, yeah. I'm not going to pull it about, let's let nature do it. There's another one there, look. Yes. As nature decided, it should happen. We have beans. <laughs> <laughs> and just as a bit of advice, I've had one or two people over the last couple of years, they would say to me about black fly, they can be, um, they can be blighted by black fly but what they do need is somewhere to land on the plant and it's these tops it's like a little helipad and they can just come down and land on there and then work their way down the plant so if you do suddenly get an attack of that just pinch the tops off first time you see it pinch the tops off and then they won't be able to land on there no more but when you do pinch the tops off just ensure that you do have you know towards the bottom of the plant you have got the first pods forming.
Now, just before we went away on holiday, we actually sowed our parsnip. They're not through yet. I wouldn't expect that um, parsnip, you know, will take around about two weeks before they do germinate. What is looking very good, though, is the outdoor shallots and garlic. There's some quite lovely plants that I can see going along here, but also some strange things that are going on. This one seems to have tied itself in a complete knot to the point that it's almost strangled itself. <laughs> but in the main, they're looking really good. These are the Mersley White. They're coming on really nice. Look at the size of the stem on that. They look really sturdy plants, don't they? You'd hope for nice sized bulbs, wouldn't you? And you can see the shallots, they have now split and they split some time ago but it's a good definite split so you can see in, for example in this one we've got one two three four five six so if we on average get six we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen there are 18 plants there times six and that's how many shallots you can hope to get at harvest time so let's go and see what's going on in the greenhouse. And actually, there's lots going on in this greenhouse. Lots of things going on. Some things are coming towards an end, i.e. they're at their harvest. You can see the spring onions. We've been having some nice harvests off these, we really have. And we've been enjoying the spinach. The spinach are now, as you can see, rising to flower. It's quite warm in this greenhouse now by day and overnight. Um, so they've decided I'm going to send a flower stalk up and make some seed. Every other day we're coming to twist out a couple of plants and the chickens are getting a really lovely tasty meal from them. You can see that the shallots in here are a bit more advanced. That's unsurprising to me because they're obviously being grown indoors and they're not exposed to the elements. But they're not going to be long before they're ready for our harvest. It's fantastic. And we'll have that lovely oniony taste to use while we're waiting for the other, the other onions to come up. The other thing is, is carrots. Let me just pull one of these out. Look at this, look. I can smell that. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Oh, it's amazing. There's nothing quite like eating some lovely young carrots. I don't need these to be long and big like this. This is ideal. Two or three on a plate. Oh. Part of your five a day, along with some of our lovely purple sprouting, along with some of our lovely purple sprouting broccoli. Just amazing. And if you remember, we sowed this seed ooh, October last year, and they got to so high, and they've been slowly growing away. But about a month ago, they really started to put some timber on, didn't they? Yeah, I was concerned we weren't going to, they weren't going to do anything, wasn't I? Yes. They proved me wrong. Which you. is good, yes. <laughs> Which is really good. So that's been a real success story, that has. Um, this has worked undercover to overwinter. So have the spring onions, so have the garlic, so have the shallots. In fact, so have the spinach. That has all worked really, really well. Some have gone, as I say, because we've finished the harvest. Some we're now beginning to harvest. But that's what you want. You don't want everything to come all at once. You can see there that we've left a radish in the ground there. That's actually rising to flower. The rest of the row, we've already eaten. They're gone. They're, and they've been really, really quite lovely. We're now eating the ones that are outside. But as this has decided to go to seed and we don't need to do anything with this yet, we thought, well, let's enjoy the flowers when they come. And actually we're thinking about leaving it in situ and see if we can get hold of some seed. Because you know, we're trying to save as much of our own seed as possible. Now, Mrs. W has uh, been potting things on just before, before we went on holiday and things are looking quite good. We've got cucumbers here and tomatoes. The only thing we didn't get around to doing was to prick out the celery. 
It's my job for today, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in desperate need of being popular. Yes, they are. But look how remarkably similar they look to the celeriac. Now, all of our celeriac actually has been pricked out now. You saw us doing that it was the last video or the video before, but um, yeah, that's all been pricked out and hopefully you're now at that stage too. Your marigolds are coming on. They are. So they still need to be they still need to be pricked out. The ones we're going to use, which you'll see a little later in the polytunnel, well they're just about ready to go out. We're just really waiting for the end of this month, really, to make sure that those temperatures really aren't going to dip down too low anymore. Just a belt and braces sort of thing. However, not everything has quite gone to plan. The claret has been absolutely amazing, but it is a very, very vigorous plant. And I can assure you that Last week, the day we left, we actually picked these plants so there was hardly anything on them. Of course, they did have some on them. You shouldn't ever strip a plant completely. But they were just little shoots that were left. Yeah, they were just little shoots, exactly. And we dropped some off to some friends in the village, and we also took some away with us on holiday. But when we got back, Look what had happened here. That flowered. So this plant has had it now. As far as it's concerned, it's flowered and, you know, it's not really going to send up any more of these lovely stalks. So we've lost a plant. Well, what it does tell us is that Mrs. W is not going to book any more holidays <laughs> at the beginning of May. <laughs> These plants are so vigorous that they really do need picking every two to three days. You need to be on top of these plants. So it's a lesson learnt. And the Rudolph that we have, they don't tend to do this as much do they? They stay on the plant for much longer. But they're not as, such a vigorous no. plant either, are they? No. This is an F1. And I would imagine that F1 strain is to, in, within this is to produce masses of these. I think I did read somewhere that you can actually eat the leaves. So we, we don't necessarily, we could probably still get another harvest. But yeah. Just a leafy harvest from that plant. Quite possibly, yes. Before the chickens have it as a meal. <laughs> now, if you're wondering why all these have bits missing, that's because we took halves of this almost immediately we came out into the garden. <laughs> because we didn't want any of these going like this. What I am going to do, I've left this here just to show you, but what I am going to do is actually just cut this off. And then we shall see exactly what does happen to that plant. Now, you can see that the peas are getting nice and tall because they're actually popping their heads above the netting that we put on to protect them from the pigeons. And it's lovely to see the way that they actually cling to any given frame that you give them, it's working really quite nicely with this uh, cattle fencing that we've put over the tunnel. You know, nature is always a wonderful thing. We talked about black fly earlier. Green fly will come at some stage, but look, there's a little ladybird. We often see them on our tours around the garden as we're doing things, bits and pieces. It's telling me that the biodiversity is working really well in our garden. And we have natural predators, which I always think is a really good thing. Carrots, they're looking amazing. And hopefully we shall see a harvest of those as we get into the month of June. When we will have enjoyed those lovely carrots from the greenhouse, Mrs W. Yes. As you know, within the polytunnel, we more or less planted the same things as we did in the greenhouse. The 
Carrots really didn't like it. We have a toucan two here by the looks of it, <laughs> maybe three. But they really didn't like it in here. This is the damper side of our garden. So I think that's what's them not particularly liked here. It could also be that the underneath there was grass. What you see just outside here, the grass that we're walking on, that was what was here. So it could be a bit uh, solid for them to be able to get their way down there. They like quite a loose soil. But hopefully over the years of this now becoming no dig, that soil is going to get ever better. But the garlic and the shallots, they look just like the ones over in the greenhouse. They're coming on really nicely. And over the next couple of weeks, what will happen is, is that this side will be where all the propagation will start to take place because we need to move it away from the greenhouse. It's going to be tomato planting time really soon. And like I say, over the next two to three weeks, we shall be, the greenhouse will start to change as we put our pepper and chili plants in. Yes, they're still all right. And <laughs> a lot of people do ask. They are still down in the house. Um, but we're actually now going to start bringing them up and actually leaving them in the greenhouse or in here just so that they do start becoming a bit more acclimatized to the temperatures in here. So yeah, May is going to be a big change in the greenhouse and here in the polytunnel. You can see we've already started to put some plants over here. We have some courgettes here. Um, this is a yellow courgette. I forget its uh, name, but it is a yellow one. Um, we did sow some, a green one, didn't we? The yeah. Defender, but um, they didn't germinate, so we just need to re-sow those. Uh, they won't take long, they'll, they'll soon catch these up, how warm the temperatures are at the moment. You can see that Mrs W's uh, marigolds, where she has... They're getting some little buds on them. Prick them out individually. Oh yeah, they are, aren't they? Yes, yeah. That's good. So, yeah, it shouldn't be too long before we see... They were all from the self-saved seed as well, weren't they? They were. So it shouldn't be too long before we see their lovely flowers once again. Now, we saw that we've finished the radish in the greenhouse and we're now eating the ones that are outside in that row down in plot one. But we sowed some more about a week before we went away and you can see they're now ready actually to go into the ground so we're now going to find a space for those and they will be the next lot that we start to eat after we finish the ones out there in plot one. Now you saw me cutting the lawn earlier and that's going on to the compost heap so I've just been mixing that with a bit of the uh, uh, material that we got from the gardener and that'll be going on into the compost heap when we finish filming. Now, plot five. Again, onions looking really good here. We did just give them a little weed after we took the covers off, because don't forget those covers have been on there since March, mid-March, when these went into the ground. Be like Mrs W, you know, she does like to leave things behind. <laughs> This plant is left here because it's something. It doesn't look like an onion to me. No, it's a marigold or, oh. or a tragedy. I thought that was a little extra crop. It's not in the way, is it? Another one there. I'll move them when they get a bit bigger, don't worry. Of course you will. <laughs> You'll remember that Mrs W, she wanted to experiment by putting these plastic cloches over the pak choy to see if she can get them into more compact shape. I'm afraid to report it was an absolute failure. <laughs> Disaster. I've left this one on at the moment and look, it's even put his flower stalk out there and sent it straight to seed. So uh, if you look at this one, this does look more like the traditional shape. And if you think they're looking a bit devoid of leaves, you'd be right because uh, I came up and picked some which we want to use for a stir fry that we're going to be having. A nice duck stir fry, I believe, Mrs. W. Yes. So we want some nice fresh things from the garden. Uh, I've picked some spring onions, some carrots from the greenhouse, 
uh, some of the radish from down there, and of course a nice lot of leaves from these pak choy. Now I don't know about you, Mrs. W, but I fancy some rhubarb crumble. So do I. It's a definite yes. <laughs> it's looking good, isn't it? It's looking really good. Looking amazing. And these strawberries are all looking good too. Though. Yeah. If you are a follower of our channel, of course, you'll know that we put these in here last year because we made the strawberry bed you saw a little while ago, we made last year. So we put some cuttings in there and we uh, you know, just wanted to ensure that we did get a harvest. So that's why they're in here. These, these, these are now coming to their third year now. So we'll be twisting those out. And that rather rhubarb that I said we've got, that's going to go in there. So we'll have three lots of rhubarb. There is the Victoria. You can see that she's doing really well. Really, really, really well. And remember, we grew that from seed. You can probably see at the back here, we have these. Um, they're now in flower. We leave these here. It is actually a weed, but we do leave them there because it encourages so much wildlife into the garden. The bees absolutely love it. Once those flower heads are spent, we shall have that cut down, out, and we won't see much of it again until this time next year. But it is so good to see the bees dancing around it. It's a bit cloudy at the moment, so you can't see them. They, they're not there at the moment. Um, but I can assure you, when it warms up later, they'll be dancing around there and absolutely enjoying those flowers. It's also really lovely to see a nice blue flower. I don't see many blue flowers. The wisteria, well, look at that look. Absolutely amazing. Never lets us down. You can probably see here, we've got a patch of nettles. This is the only place where we let the nettles grow. And we want those, we said it before about the ladybirds. And one of the reasons we have lots of them is because we do ensure that we keep stinging nettles somewhere. And you can see, look, there's one. They absolutely love stinging nettles. There's actually another one over here, Mrs. W. Can I get it? I think I've got it. But we can see them, can't we? Yeah, they're definitely there. So I can assure you that just by leaving a small patch, that will encourage things like this into your garden. The other thing is, of course, is that you can make nice nettle tea, which is full of nitrogen, which leafy plants like brassicas really appreciate and you know by doing that you don't really need to go out anywhere and buy fertilizer all the fertilizer you need is actually within your garden if you just configure it right things such as nettles you know we make the comfrey freed we'll make a video on that a bit later on in the year we're just waiting for the flowers to go over because it's almost comfrey tea time isn't it mrs w <laughs> And, you know, it is amazing stuff. You can feed your plants with these things all through the year. Now, another thing we got while we were away from our garden, away on holiday, was this. And you may think, why have you got that? It's somewhere for the birds to nest. Well, we do like to encourage the birds in for starters. But while we were away, we visited, what's the name of the place? Bidolf Gardens. Bidolf Gardens. It is a National Trust place. And they have, well, all sorts of gardens there. They've got tulip gardens, haven't they? Japanese gardens, Chinese gardens. But this particular garden, the Chinese garden, they're revamping a building that was there. And they're using the tiles, the old tiles, which are now becoming chipped and damaged. They're using those to make these birdhouses. And so we thought we'd have one of those, didn't we? Yeah. It's got to choose a place to put it now. Remember, this building is probably well over 100 years old, so we've got a bit of history in the garden. It's been about 12 years since we last went to 
Castleton, where we stayed on our holiday in the Peak District. Still looks as wonderful, but it is always nice to bring a little something back to remember that holiday with. Now, do let us know in the comments below how you've been. And do let us know what happens to your garden, what you've observed when you go away. As you can see from ours, there's some very good. There's also some not so good. But a garden is a place to be enjoyed. And we all do need a break now and again. So there really isn't any hard and fast rules. If it was the middle of summer, just ensure that somebody, a neighbour or a family member can perhaps come around and water the plants every other day while you're away. And perhaps you can return that favour when they need to go on holiday. Now, we have something to build, Mrs W. We do. <laughs> but you'll find out more about that in a couple of videos time. We shall see you next time. <laughs>